Meet the new boss in fast charging, the iPhone 12 Pro Max. In this episode of the Make Me Smarter Guide, we will focus on the iPhone 12 Pro Max and see how it uses 25 watts of USB charging to achieve fast charging performance. Again, we'll use visualization to give you insights and tips on how to get your fastest charging experience. We'll use the GRL C2 tester as well as the PowerSuite Pro. This gives us a way to monitor the phone's battery information, including battery charge. It lets us see the USB power going into the phone, as well as the ambient temperature and the phone's temperature and see how it all interrelates. In past episodes, we looked at the iPhone 12 and how it charged using MagSafe wireless charging technology. We also looked at the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro USB charging. In this episode, we will focus on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which uniquely uses 25 watts for fast charging, and we'll compare that to other phones. Let's first take a closer look at the iPhone 12 Pro Max and how it takes advantage of 25 watts charging. To do that, we will compare an Anchor PowerPort PD Nano that supports a max of 20 watts with a Tama 36 watt power adapter. Let's go ahead and start the charging comparison. If we first look at the device battery percentage, we can see that in the case of Tama, that it's clearly beating out the Anker 20 watt charger and there's much faster charging performance overall. And to see why that's the case, let's take a look at the power. And you can see here that in the case of Tama, initially about 25 watts of charging is used and there are some spikes of maybe 27, 28 watts or so. But in the case of Anker, since it's limited to 20 watts, uh, about a max of 19 watts is used. So that results in, in slower charging. We can also see that as a result of the faster charging initially, there's a slightly higher increase in maximum temperature in the case of Tama versus uh, Anker. It's also interesting to see that with the Tama 36 watt charger, the initial power tiers used by the iPhone 12 Pro Max, initially it's about 25 watts or so, and then falls to 20 watts, and then maybe close to 15, and then maybe about 9 watts. And in the case of Anchor, about, again, about 19 watts is used, and that falls to maybe about 13, 14 watts or so, and then falls to maybe 8, 9 watts or so. Note this testing here was done at room temperature with a fan blowing on the iPhone to keep down the heat. Uh, that gives you the fastest charging possible with the iPhone given that any sort of, sort of excess heat is usually dealt with through lower power and thus lower charging. So here we're looking at comparing the ideal charging curves using an Anker 20 watt charger versus a Tama 36 watt charger. So why does the iPhone 12 Pro Max need 25 watts of power? To get a better understanding of that, we can take a look at this chart. On the Y axis, we can see the max USB power used to charge the phones. And on the X axis, we can see the phone's battery capacity. Generally speaking, over time, you can see that the battery capacities have been increasing overall for iPhone models. Now, in the case of the iPhone 12 Pro Max, if we compare that with the 12 and 12 Pro models, there is about a 31% increase in battery capacity. And that 31% increase is about the same increase in terms of max USB power as well. So you can see by increasing the max USB power used, essentially the 12 Pro Max can keep the same charging times as seen with the smaller models, the 12 and 12 Pro. 
So we can actually see that by doing another charge comparison between the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And you can see you know, very clearly that the battery percentage speeds are about the same between the, the two models, even though the power used is quite different. Again, with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, initially it's about 25 watts. But in the case of the iPhone 12 Pro, the max power achieved is closer to about 19, 20 watts or so. But despite that difference, the same levels of battery percentage is maintained throughout the charging cycle. Now let's compare the iPhone 12 Pro Max with the previous version, the iPhone 11 Pro Max. The iPhone 12 Pro Max actually has smaller battery capacity than the 11 Pro Max, but uses higher max USB power. On the left here, we have the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and on the right, we have the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, if we just focus on the battery percentage, we can see that the iPhone 12 Pro Max is clearly charging a lot faster than the 11 Pro Max. And to see why that's the case, if we just look at the USB power used to, to charge the phones, in the case of the iPhone 12 Pro Max, a max of 25 watts with occasional spikes to 27 to 28 watts is used. Whereas in the case of the iPhone 11 Pro Max, only 22 watts max is used. And this clearly has an impact on how quickly these phones charge. Now let's compare the iPhone 12 Pro Max with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G. We can see here in this chart that the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G has a higher battery capacity than the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but both maintain a maximum of 25 watts of power charging. On the left, we have the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G, and on the right, we have the iPhone 12 Pro Max. There are a lot of differences between how these two phones charge. With the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G, it uses a variable voltage type scheme, so the voltage levels can change a lot at any point in time. Whereas in the case of the iPhone 12 Pro Max, fixed voltage levels are used. You can also see that with the USB power charging curve profile, in the case of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G, that, that curve profile is very smooth. Whereas if we take a look at the iPhone 12 Pro Max, a tiered approach is preferred. The iPhone 12 Pro Max starts at about 25 watts of charging before it cycles down to the next tier of 20 watts, goes down to about 15 watts, and so on. Whereas with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G, this tiering system isn't preferred, and instead, a very smooth USB charging profile is used. You can see also that the iPhone 12 Pro Max is charging a lot faster in terms of battery percentage. Now it's also very interesting to see that with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the, a one stage charging cycle is used to charge the battery from zero to 100%. But in the case of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G, a two stage charging cycle is used. The first stage charges the phone from zero to about 79% or so. And then the power levels go up again. In this case, the USB power level goes up to maybe about 16 watts or so, and then trends down gradually to complete the second stage of charging. In the previous charging comparison, that was done at room temperature with a fan to give you the fastest charging times. Now, let's see what happens if we remove that fan and see how both these phones deal with thermal issues. In the case of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G, we can see that instead of going up to 25 watts, it alternates between 22.5 watts of power 
drops down to maybe about 8 watts or so, goes back to 22.5, and, and alternates between these two levels. Whereas in the case of the iPhone 12 Pro Max, again, 25 watts of power is not achieved. It chooses about 22.5 watts as well. But you can see here that instead of going through this type of staged uh, approach between high and low power, uh, there's much more of a high frequency approach with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. There are very sudden spikes in the USB power used to, to charge the phone. You can also see with the iPhone 12 Pro Max that at about 80% battery, it takes a cool down break, similar to what we had seen earlier with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G, taking a two stage approach to the charging cycle. That two stage approach is still used here, even at uh, room temperature without a fan. And we'll see here at about 80% the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G Again, starting that second stage of charging and hitting about, uh, again, about 16 watts or so before steadily decreasing. Uh, but overall, with the room temperature case without a fan, uh, again, we see faster charging performance with the iPhone 12 Pro Max versus the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G. So let's now compare the iPhone 12 Pro Max with the Google Pixel 4 XL, which has a similar battery capacity as the iPhone 12 Pro Max. But you can see here that the max USB power is quite different. The iPhone 12 Pro Max has a max USB power of 25 watts, whereas with the Google Pixel 4 XL, we see only 16 watts. On the left, we have the Pixel 4 XL, and on the right, again, we have the iPhone 12 Pro Max. In this case, the testing was done at room temperature without a fan to show the impacts of thermal management. So in the case of the Pixel 4 XL, we can see that initially it charges at 16 watts max, but because of these thermal considerations, every time the temperature goes over 40 degrees Celsius, there's a rapid reduction in the power in order to help reduce the temperature. And the overall power range is quite high. So you can see there's a max of 16 watts, but that can go down to five watts as well, depending on the temperature situation. Whereas in the case of the iPhone 12 Pro Max, that power level vacillates between about 22.5 watts to about 12.5 watts. So very different approaches towards thermal management and overall charging. And not surprisingly, you can see here that the iPhone 12 Pro Max is charging a lot faster than the Pixel 4 XL and clearly shows how it can use higher power charging like 25 watt chargers to be able to achieve faster charging overall. We certainly hope you enjoyed experiencing this journey through iPhone 12 charging and you learned a lot in the process. All the testing was done using the GRL C2 which is able to emulate any USB charging device and check for product quality by running compliance and benchmarking tests. The C2 was able to capture power and protocol information between the chargers and the iPhone 12, while the GRL PowerSuite Pro software was able to capture FLIR thermal camera measurements and communicate with the iPhone to get battery charge data. We then applied PowerSuite Pro extended visualization software to show charging in action so that you can gain better insights for how to get the best charging experience possible. To keep up to date on our latest charging analysis, please subscribe here to this channel. And to get more knowledge and benchmarking information, come visit us at www.gtrusted.com, where we try to keep everyone in the know. Until next time.